Hey everybody, Puzzle Max here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the crazy 3x3 Mercury Circle Cube. This is the first of the Planet series. I'm going to be covering all eight of these, and they're great puzzles. If you haven't looked at them yet, check them out. They're a lot of fun. This one is very similar to the standard crazy 3x3 Circle Cube. On this one, the cr standard one, all six faces are zero faces, where the inside circle stays put and the outside rotates around it. This one is pretty much the same. There are five faces with zero faces where that outside circle rotates and the inside circle stays put. But on this one, the white face is a one face. That has a big impact on the solve and the mix up of this puzzle because not only can the faces turn just like they did on the standard one, but because this one face allows the inside edges and the inside corner pieces to change orbits, you can mix things up a whole lot more. So for example, if I put the blue up here, now this blue edge and blue corners of the inside can change orbit. That basically means that this white face is going to be your best friend during quite a few portions of the solve because it's very helpful in getting things back where they need to go. So let me go ahead, scramble this up, and we'll take a look at it. All right, all scrambled up and ready to go. First thing to do on this one is to get all of the inside edge pieces solved on all six faces. Best, best way to approach this is to get the yellow face, the one opposite of the one face, taken care of first. So I'm going to get all of these yellow inside edges in place. I've got two up here. I can just rotate those down. Pretty easy. Uh, this one is in a good spot. Let's see. If I just bring this down here, it works, but it's going to kick one out that's already right. Here's where using the one face is very helpful. I can bring this up to the top. So if I bring this up to the white face, get it out of the way, move this one back down. Now, because this one can turn and move around, I can put it down here by just bringing this up, putting it in place, and bringing it back down. Uh, because of the way this face works, this puzzle works rather, now that you've gotten that cross done, for these uh, middle layer, middle faces, the top and bottom inside edges on all of these faces cannot change orbit because they can never reach the one face they are always going to be in the correct orbit. So if you just turn the bottom layer and the top layer a few times, you'll have those lines complete on all of these faces. So once you get those done, the next step is to just take advantage of the one face and find colors up here that aren't white and put them where they belong around the puzzle. So I don't have any oranges up here. I do have a green up here, so I'm going to move this up to the top, put green in its place, and bring it back down. Around here, I've got one red available. Um, I can use this one, but it'll put a white in place, and I'm not trying to fix that quite yet, so let's use this blue one and replace it with the red one. So if I move the blue up here, bring the red over, and bring it back down, that's good to go. Now I've got two blues up here on the white face. I can put them both in, so bring this up and around, bring that down, and bring this white one up, bring that blue around, and bring it back down. Now I've got the orange that needs to go here. Um, I can't just turn this down like this because it'll mess up the yellow that I've already done. So I've got to get this out of the way first. Bring the white up, put the orange in its place, and bring it back down just like that. And I believe this red one is the last one to go. Bring that up, bring the red in, and put it back down. And now I can just turn the top face to fix the inside edges on all of these faces, and because I did the yellow first, now the inside edges on the white face are also done. The next step is where the one face isn't too helpful. So what I like to do is put that down on the bottom, and now I'm going to fix the outside edges for all of the faces around the puzzle. Because I don't want to move the white face if I can help it, I'm going to fix the outside edges on the white face first. Most of this just uses standard edge piece three cycles, so you just need to find some that need to go into place and figure out how to put them there. Uh, this white one, I've got the white and blue that needs to go down here because white is facing up. I know that it can go straight down. 
Again, I can't just turn this down because it's going to mess up some of the inside edges that I put into place. So I need to get this out of the way on this white face, on this yellow face rather. Bring this position that it needs to go to up to the top. Move that white and blue outside edge into that spot and then undo the double turn that I did over there. Now I've got this red and white that needs to go down here. This one, because the white lines up with the red, if I just bring it down to the bottom here the way I did for the blue one, it's going to be upside down. So I need to put it off to the side and bring this position up here, because I know that if I bring this down this direction, the red lines up. So if I bring this position up this way, I can put that red and white one down, undo that move, and then bring that back up. Now I've got those, the blue and white done and the red and white done. Green and white is now on the top with the white facing up. So I know that I can do that by just bringing this position all the way up to the top, putting the green and white in, and bringing it all the way back down. And the last one I have here is the orange and white, which is sitting in the equator. In order to get this out, I just need to do a down, down, up, up edge piece series to bring this back up to the top. So if I just go down, down, up, up, now I've got the orange and white on the top face with white facing up. Bring it around. I'm going to bring this position up to the top. Put the orange and white where it belongs. And then undo that double turn to fix that. Now that entire white cross with the inside and outside edges is done. Which means for the rest of this, I can avoid turning this white face. And it makes it easier to just use these zero faces to place these outside edges. Um, next thing I'm going to do is put in three of the outside edges along the equator here. Doesn't matter which ones, but I want to leave an empty space here so that I have a free space to do edge piece series in order to fix the outside edges on the top face. So the first one here, I've got this orange and blue sitting on top of the orange face, which means I know that I can just bring it straight down into this, into this position and undo things and it'll fit where it belongs. So if I'm going to bring this down first, get it out of the way, undo that first move, and then bring it back up. And now the orange is blue, orange and blue is where it belongs. Let's see here. I've got red and green on top. That's another good one. I can bring this down to here. It'll line up. So down, down, up, up. And I've got this orange and green, again, sitting on top of where it belongs. If it wasn't, it doesn't matter. You can just move it over into a position that works. You just have to make sure that it's lined up with a color that's the same as the one facing that center. So I can bring this down and both of those colors will match up. So I'm going to bring this one down into this position with a down, down, up, up. And now I've got one, two, three of these outside edges on the equator taken care of. So now this is going to be my free space. What I want to do now is fix the outside edges on the yellow orange and the yellow green. I want to get the two in the back corner here taken care of. So I've got the yellow green here. So if I bring that empty space over here, this needs to go up so that it lines up with the yellow. So let's bring it over to here so that the green matches the green. I can just bring it up move it out of the way and bring that back down. And now that green and yellow is correct. So I can just put that back where it belongs. And let's see, let's take care of this orange and yellow. Let's move it over here where I can use it with this empty space on the equator and just put it in the equator so it's out of the way for now. So I'm just going to move it down, down, up, up. I'm going to put this green and yellow back where it belongs, back over here. And now, in order to put this in place, I need to move it up this direction. So I'm going to move this yellow to match up with the yellow. The orange is going to match up with the orange. Move that up. Get it out of the way. Bring a new one back down. And then bring this back around so that all those are in place. Now, from this position, you're either going to have one of three scenarios. Well, one of four. Either everything's going to be correct, ready to go you're going to have either a three cycle where all three of these are incorrect and need to move around replacing each other. 
you could have a situation where one of them is correct and two are in the right place but flipped. Or you'll have what I have here, uh, the, the situation here where two are in the right place and flipped. But for this one, it's easier to deal with if you make sure that the equator one is correct. So I'm going to take this one in the equator, out of place. I'm just going to move this down, down, up, up. And now in order to put this back without messing either one of these up, I'm going to bring this position up to the top. Move this red and blue piece over and then move it back down. And now we're sitting in a position where both of these are in the correct, uh, correct place. They just need to flip. They're upside down. This is pretty easy to take care of, and it's it reminds me of a set of moves on a Pyraminx. So if you can follow along with that, you can probably see what I'm doing here. What I'm going to do is a three cycle, and then a three cycle in another direction that's going to flip both of these and put them correct. So if I go down, down, up, up, and then move this one over. So move the blue and yellow over, bring this one up, bring this back around, and then bring this down. That flipped those two, kept everything else correct. One other possible situation is a parity. And that's where you'll have two of these that need to flip, the two, two of these that need to swap places. Whether they're facing the right direction or not, they're not in the right location. That parity is another situation where you have to use the one face in order to change things around and move some stuff around. So give me one second, let me set that up and I'll show you how it works. And here we have the parity case for the outside edges. As you can see here, this yellow and green, even though it's oriented correctly, it's not in the right place. And this yellow and orange, also oriented correctly, but not in the right place. These are the only two that are wrong. The rest of them are where they're supposed to be, but these two need to switch places. Because you can't just flip two of them, what you need to do here is kind of mess things up a little bit in order to make these fixable. So first thing you need to do is turn any zero face one turn. So just 90 degrees. I like doing this with the left hand uh, with the left. I just do a regular left turn. And now I need to repair the inside edge pieces with an even number of turns. So in order to do that, you've got to use this white face so that you can swap out the inside edges with some others that are currently incorrect. So for example, if I was just to do this, bring this up, it fixes it, but obviously I still have the parity. I haven't done anything to fix that yet. So if I bring this back down, what I want to do here is rotate this bottom face, my one face, 180 degrees. And then I'm going to do a 2R with both of these, a wide right turn. That's going to bring the one up to the top here, along with another inside edge that's incorrect. So now that I bring this around, now I can bring this yellow up here, this blue is going to come across to here, and this green will come back down here. And then when I undo those setup moves, the yellows will be correct and the greens will be correct. So if I just do left inverse, up, up, left, up, up, and then I want to do the wide right twice and then undo that double turn that I did on the bottom. So now it's fixed all of those inside edges and all of these inside edges. So now I want to flip the entire puzzle over so that I have my one face on top. And I want to do the same thing, but this time these are the only two that are incorrect. So in order to fix these, I just need to bring this white up to here and this blue down to here. If I do this and swap it around, it's going to leave me in the same situation. So what I do here is just take this one face and turn it 180 degrees. Now I'm going to bring this white up to here. This one is going to move across to here, and this blue is going to come down to here. And it's the same thing. It's just left inverse, up, up, left. And because I did that 2U as my setup move, this is already back to where it's supposed to be. Now what that did, if I come back to my yellow on top, looks like I still have the parity here. But if you look a little closer, this red and white 
outside edge is now lined up with the orange, and this orange and white outside edge is now lined up with the red. This is very easy to fix, but it'll also repair this parity because it's going to mess up a couple other things up here. In order to fix these two, I'm just going to bring both of these up to the yellow face, which is a zero face. So I'm going to bring the red and white with the orange, and the orange and white with the red, bring those up to the zero face, and then just do a 180 degree turn. And then undo both of those setup moves. And then undo this U2. And now, that's back where it belongs. That's back where it belongs. And now up here, I have the red and yellow that's not correct, the orange and yellow that's not correct, and the green and yellow that's not correct. So I have a three cycle up here in order to fix things. For this, I'm going to just go back to the same way I was doing things and fix these outside edges on the top face. So I'm going to bring this red and yellow down to the equator. Then I'm going to bring the red and yellow section over here, put this red and yellow in place, swap it out with something that I'm not worried about yet, and then put those back. So now back here, the blue and yellow is correct and the red and yellow is correct. And now I've got a situation where these two are in the right place. They're just um, facing the wrong direction. They're just flipped. So I'm going to fix this equator first so that I can do all of the work on this yellow face. So just a three cycle to bring that equator up to the top. And then I'm going to fix that equator piece. And in doing so, Sometimes you get lucky, and I also fixed the two flipped pieces. So now all of the outside edges and inside edges are completely reduced. Everything's where they're supposed to be. The next step is going to be fixing these little inside triangles, the inside corner pieces, all around the puzzle. This step is not difficult, but it is probably the most time-consuming, because there's just a lot to keep track of and a lot that needs to be done. So... Give me one second, I'll show you how the, all of that works. <clears throat> now we come to the inside corner pieces. This one is another spot where you really need to take advantage of the one face that you have. The set of moves you're going to use here is a three cycle of these inside pieces. And the way it's going to work is you're going to bring this one down to the bottom. You're going to bring a new one into place. So this one that's here is going to swap over to wherever you... Uh, whatever new piece you bring in and then whatever one's down here is going to swap up to the top so it's a very simple set of moves but it can be used from a lot of different angles in a lot of different ways so the first thing i'm going to do is just a regular down down up up edge piece series so if i go down and i you have to do this so that you bring the one you have to start with the one that you want to fix by bringing it down first so i'm going to go down down up up. Now I want to bring the color that I'm looking to place into this position underneath this spot. So I'm going to bring this green one around twice with that one face as my bottom. And then I'm going to undo that down, down, up, up that I did. Since I started on the left last time, I'm going to start on the right this time. So down, down, up, up. And as you can see, it brought that green one up into this uh, position. And then you can just fix your down face. And now I can do the same thing over here because I have another green on the bottom on my one face. The one face has to be a bottom because you have to move that corner piece when you do the turn on the bottom. So same thing, but this time I'm gonna start on the right. So this one is gonna go down, down, up, up. It looks fixed, but it's not yet. It brought something else into place. So now I want to bring this green one underneath the position that I'm looking to fix and undo that three cycle that I did. Uh, because I started on the right first time, I've got to start on the left this time. So down, down, up, up, and it fixed that. And now I can just bring this back around. So let's see. I don't have any oranges on this white face. So I can't fix either one of those. Um, I don't have any blues down here. But I do have a couple of red ones, so let's go ahead and fix both of these. This red is going to move, but I'm not worried about that because I can use this red to swap 
and bring it up here. So if I go down, down, up, up, bring this red around to this position underneath where I started, and then undo that move. I started on the left last time, so start on the right, down, down, up, up, and then just move the bottom back around. Now I've got one more red down here that I can use. So this one, I want to bring this down. So I'm going to start on the right. So down, down, up, up. Bring this red underneath where I want it to go. And because I started on the right last time, I'm going to start on the left this time. And down, down, up, up. Brought that in, fix the bottom. Let's see, anybody else down here we can work with? Not really, but I've got a couple colors on the top that I can work with. So here's where you gotta get a little creative. So if, say for example that I wanna fix these blues. If I turn this, it'll bring this blue down to the bottom, which is where I need it to be on a one face. And then I can use this red to swap things around. So. I'm going to start by just taking this blue piece that's on the top and do a 2R as my setup move. Got to remember that and remember where everything was so I can undo that setup move correctly after I swap the piece in. So I'm going to swap this red one out. So I'm going to bring it down first and then bring this blue one into its place. So down, down, up, up. Bring this blue one around to here. Undo that first... Uh, first set, uh, set of moves that I did, start on the right this time. So down, down, up, up. It fixed that. Now I have to undo the two U -turn, D turns that I did down here. And then remember my setup move from the beginning was the two R that I did. So that fixed everybody else up here. And now I've got another blue that I need to fix up here. And I've got another blue on the top face. So if I bring this blue piece down to the bottom, then I still have this piece sitting where it needs to be, and I can still fix it using my one face as my bottom. So I'm going to bring this blue one down to the bottom. I'm not worried about this white one yet, so I can move that in this algorithm. It's not going to hurt anything, and swap it for this blue one. So starting on the right this time, down, down, up, up. Now I'm going to bring this blue one underneath where it needs to go and undo that first set of moves, down, down, up, up, and undo that, and then undo the setup move that I did, so that everything's still happy. Down here, let's see what else we got in this top layer that I'm working with. All right, I've got an orange one up here in this top layer that needs to be fixed. This orange one I can bring to the bottom, but if I bring it down with left turns, it's going to move the piece that I want to fix along with it. So I can't use that. However, from this position, if I do some turns back here on the red face, I can also move this orange piece to the bottom. So if I just do turn this red face twice, now that orange piece is down here on the bottom. Uh, being mindful of what I've moved and knowing that this white piece didn't move or change so I can replace that with something different. I'm just going to bring this green one down. So down, down, up, up. Move the orange that I want to replace underneath the position that I started. And then undo that sequence of moves. Down, down, up, up. Undo my D turns that I did. And then remembering my setup moves, I have to change this red face and bring it back around as well. So now all of the pieces on the top section of these middle faces are correct. Now things can get a little more complicated. So let's take a look at what we've got going here. So I've got these that I need to fix. The only red pieces that I have on either the white or the yellow, so no red pieces on the yellow, but I do have one red piece on the white that I can go. But I can't use this in that three cycle that I've been doing. I, it has to be in the, one of the top corners. But I can move this around the puzzle, which will put it as a top corner on the orange face. And then have free access to the white face still at the bottom. So 
just being careful here so that this red that I want to use to fix things doesn't change position. I'm going to bring this empty red slot around, turn the puzzle around. Now I can use this to fix with this. So I'm going to do that same series that I was doing and just make sure that I don't get lost because colors are a little different. But I know that this white is going to replace this white. It's not going to hurt anything, so I can use that position. So if I go down, down, up, up, bring this red over, undo that sequence of moves, down, down, up, up, fix the D-turn that I did so that everything's good, and then undo the move that I did on that red face to bring that around. And now that red inside corner is taken care of. Now let's see here. I've got a green one down here on this white face, and it looks like, because of where it's sitting, that I can fix this blue inside corner with the same set of moves that I've been doing, very similarly to the way I just fixed this red one. So I'm going to bring this blue one around to the other side, bring it around. Now this section I can use to fix with this green one. Here, here's where you can kind of be a little careful. I know that if I bring this blue one directly down to here, when I undo the sequence of moves, it's going to leave that blue piece on the yellow face. So if I bring this down to this position, it's going to end up on the yellow face when I undo everything. So I'm going to start this by doing just a single turn on the down face. That way, when I finish off this three cycle, this blue piece is going to remain on this white face, the one face that I want to use to fix as much as I can. So with that in mind, I'm just going to do down, down, up, up. I'm going to bring this green one over and undo that sequence. And now I have to undo my setup moves. First thing I did was to put that back to where I started the algorithm. Now I did a setup move on the D, so I'm going to bring that back. And then another setup move to bring all that around. So my yellow is still good. All of my outside edges and everything are still where they belong. Uh, another very similar case. Blue is down here on the white. I've got an empty blue spot, blue spot here. Sorry, can't speak. Empty blue spot here on this corner. I can bring this around to the green face, just like that. And again, I want to leave this red down here on the white face if I can. So let's move this over so that this red is going to end up here, this white's going to come across here, and this blue will end up up here. So down, down, up, up, bring this blue underneath where I want it to go, and undo those moves, down, down, up, up, undo that D move, and now undo my setup moves. So I know I need to bring this around, all those are lined up like they should be, and then I can undo the two turns that I did there. So, now I've got another very similar case. Most of these really come down to just getting creative with your setup moves and figuring out the best way to make things work as easy as you possibly can. I'm going to show you a different way of approaching this, since I've shown you this the way that I've been doing a couple of times already. Say, for example, you want to fix this corner. So you move it to the top, so you put the white as your top face. Instead of turning this uh, this corner to a new face, I'm going to turn the one center and the corner that I want to use to repair this with to the bottom. So if I just do a wide left turn, so wide L2, now I've got the um, the uh, the red that I want to use to repair this down on the bottom, and the one face is down on the bottom. If I want to keep this orange on the one face, I can, or I can just move it down here to this yellow because I'm not worried about fixing the yellow or the white quite yet. So this will work just fine. So I'm just going to go down, down, up, up, same thing, and then put that red underneath where it belongs, and down, down, up, up. Bring that back, and then undo the wide left turns that I did. All of that's done. All the blue's done. Still got a couple of oranges to work with, and one green to work with. So let's take a look here. This, 
these two orange pieces need to fix, and I've got an orange down here on the yellow face that I need to work with. So, I don't need to move the corners that I'm trying to fix, but I do need to move this one face to the bottom. I can do that very simply by just doing 2M. Those 2M slices don't affect anything on the front, the top, the bottom, or the back. Don't touch any of those corners on any of those faces. However, it does rotate the faces on the right and the left. So as you can see, if I do a partial M turn there, it rotates the centers on the right and the left. But because I'm not using either one of those to fix this, these inside corners, I'm not too concerned about it. So I'm going to do the same thing to fix this green one. So I'm just going to go down, down, up, up. That green one moved down here. I'm going to put the orange one in its place and undo that down, down, up, up. Undo the D turns that I did and then undo that 2M that I did to begin with. Now let's see. Now I've got a green on the yellow face and a green slot up here in the top layer that needs to be fixed. Another situation where I can do exactly what I was doing, but I'll have to use another setup move in order to make sure that I can fix this uh, this spot with this green piece. So I'm going to do another 2M. Bring that down there. Now because I want this green piece to go up here, I can't just start the algorithm from this position. So I need to move this bottom face to another spot so that when I start the algorithm, I'll be able to move this green into the position it needs to go. So I'm just going to do a turn on the down face, the one face that I created, and now I can go down, down, up, up. I can put this green one underneath where I want it to go and then undo the moves that I did there. And now, because of the way I move things, I can just fix my M turns. So now my M slices are done. And now it looks like the only thing that I have that isn't white or yellow that I have left is this orange piece. This slot in the top layer that I need to fix can be replaced by this yellow, uh, this orange one down here on the yellow face. But I just have to bring the one face to the bottom so that I can use it. So I'm just going to do the two M's. And now I'm going to repair <clears throat> this orange slot by bringing this one in. So I'm just going to go down, down, up, up. I'm going to bring this orange one around and undo that down, down, up, up. Undo the D moves so that I can undo that setup of the two of the M slices. That's done. And now all of the circles on each one of these faces is complete. The only two that I have left are the white and the yellow. So for this, I'm going to put the white face, the actual white face, back on the bottom and be a little more creative again with how I move these empty slots, the slots that I need to repair, into a position that I can use. So let's see. Down here I've got these two yellows. If I move this slot to the blue face, then I know that I can use that same series of moves with this yellow piece involved somehow. So I'm going to bring this slot down to the blue face, still have my one on the bottom. But now, if I do that same series of moves, it's going to move this blue one that's already correct. So I can't start it here. I have to do D2 so that I put a white slot down here so that this white piece will come to here, this white one will go here, and this yellow one will come up to where I want it to go. So I just have to remember those setup moves. And it's down, down, up up, bring that yellow one over to here, undo this, and then I have to keep track of my setup moves. So if I bring this back around so that that yellow is all lined up, that blue is all lined up, now I can just undo that move that I did on the left. And now let's take another look here. Let's see. This white one on the top needs to go to the bottom, and I can see that I can move this white one to the green face without moving the yellow one on the one face that I need to fix it with. So I'm going to move this white one down to the green face with just a regular left turn. And same thing. Here I have to, again, be careful not to mess up anything that I already have correct. So I can't put this white here because it's going to mess up this green one. So I have to do a couple of turns on the one face on the bottom so that now this white one will go to here 
this white one will go here, and this yellow one is going to come back up here. So down, down, up, up. I'm going to bring this yellow one underneath where I need it to go, and then undo this sequence of moves. And we're good to go. Now I just have to undo my setup moves down here, make sure that as much of this lines up as should, and then undo that left turn. And now all of the circles in the center of all six faces are complete. That step, again, is not difficult. Once you get kind of familiar with the algorithm and how things move, it makes perfect sense. But it is can be very time-consuming just because it's hard to do. It's good to learn it on this puzzle and take your time understanding it because it that same sequence of moves comes into play a lot on a few other of the planet series. So take your time, pay attention to it. That's why I went through every step of it. And I think I covered a lot of the different situations that can pop up, but we've made it to the final step, which is fixing the corners on the outside corners, rather on all of these remaining pieces. Uh, this, this, uh, this spot is very easy to do. You can use just your regular corner piece series, but you have to do some setup moves and be a little careful of where you put things so that you know what's going to move and how you're going to move it. So hang on one second and I'll show you how all of that works. All right, the outside corners. Like I said, you can use your regular corner piece series to fix these. The corner piece series that I'm familiar with and comfortable using for this situation is also known as the Niklas algorithm. It's how I learned it when I was first starting out with a 3x3 many years ago. Uh, let me show you that on a plain regular 3x3 and just explain what's going to happen. So what this is going to do is it's going to swap this corner piece is going to move over to here and this color on top is going to move to the back. This corner piece is going to move over to here and this color on top is going to move to the left and this corner in the back left is going to move to the front uh, front right and the corner that's on the top is going to end up facing right. So you can use that knowledge to put things not only in the right positions, but also oriented correctly as you're fixing them on the Mercury. So if I just start this, I can go right, up inverse, left inverse, up, right inverse, up inverse, left, up. Fixes all of those. There are some variations of this where you can do double turns on your first turn to move this piece up to here, this piece across to here, this piece down to here. And there's a left-hand version, which is just the same, but starting on the opposite side, just the mirror of it. So it's really just a matter of kind of taking that knowledge, getting creative with how you set pieces up so you can move them into the right place. So the only thing here that's really important is that you make sure that you perform that algorithm, that corner series, with a zero on top, a zero face on the right, and a zero face on the left. That's going to guarantee that the only pieces that move are the outside corners. Nothing else is going to come along with it. You can use the one face for setup moves, and you'll probably have to use the one faces for uh, the zero faces for setup moves as well. The way I like to do this is I hold the yellow on top, which means that no matter how I rotate the cube, the surrounding faces are all zero faces, along with the yellow, which is also a zero face. So it's always going to be right. And the first thing I like to try and do is put all of the white corners in the correct places and oriented correctly. So let's find what we have down here. First of all, on the white face, this white, red, and blue corner is already where it belongs. And I've got three other corners on the yellow face that are white, which means I should have no problem putting these where they belong. So let's find where this red, white, and green needs to go. It needs to go down here. So I'm going to put it over top of the spot where it goes and then have a look at it. So if I were to just bring this whole section up to the top, now if I do that corner piece series with the left-hand side, this white is going to move to the back. And that's where I need it to be. So I can use this setup move in order to make sure that this piece ends up in the correct position and oriented correctly. So I'm just going to do left inverse, up, right, up inverse, 
left, up, right inverse, up inverse, and then undo that setup move that I did. That puts all of my edges back where they belong, and now that corner is correct. Because I'm not worried about any of the corners on the yellow face yet, it doesn't matter what other two pieces are involved, so long as the one that I'm trying to fix ends up in the correct place. So let's see what else we got. Here's a really good one. Um, this orange, white, and green needs to come back here. If I just put it above that and then bring it up to the yellow face, you can see that if I do that left-hand corner piece series, this orange is going to come back here, which is not what I want it to line up with. So that's not a good way to go. However, if I put this opposite the position I want it to go, and then bring that corner that I'm looking to fix up to the top. Now, this white will come all the way across to the back here, which is what I want. I want the white to be here. So I can do that same corner piece series, but instead of doing a single left turn, I'm going to do two left turns. So it's going to be left, left, up, right, up inverse, left, left, up, right, sorry, right inverse, up inverse, and then left, left. And now undo the setup move that I did. And that green, orange, and white is where it belongs. Same basic thing here. Uh, this also works from the other side. If you're more comfortable with the right-hand version, this white needs to come down to here. So if I do this setup move, now this white will come all the way across to the white back here, which is where it needs to be. So I'm just going to do that corner piece series with two right turns. So right, right, up inverse, left, up, right, right, up inverse, left, up. And then undo that setup move that I did. And now all of the corners on the white face are in the right place and oriented correctly. All right, now that all of the white corners are in place, last thing to do is fix all of the yellow corners. For this, you can use most of the last layer algorithms that you're familiar with, if you have some that are quicker than what I'm doing here. The main thing here is you can't use the white face. You cannot turn this one face during any of those algorithms because you're going to involve these inner corner pieces, the inner triangles, if you do. So as long as you turn just the right, left, front, back, and up, all your zero faces, you're safe to use those algorithms. I like doing this just the same way I've been doing. So this uh, green, red, and yellow is where it belongs. Just needs to rotate. I'll take care of that in a minute. This one here, let's see, this needs to go over to here. This orange, green, and yellow needs to come across to here. And this red, blue, and yellow needs to come back down to here. So if I just do the left-hand corner piece series, it'll put all three of these back where they belong. So do that once. I'm not worried about orientation at this point. I'm just worried about getting them where they belong. All right, so now they're all back where they need to go, and I've got two that need to rotate. This one needs to turn clockwise, and this one needs to turn counterclockwise. I know that the soon followed by the left-hand soon will rotate this corner clockwise and this corner counterclockwise. So if I just move this corner into this position as a setup move, and then perform my right hand soon, followed by the left hand soon. And then undo that setup move. Everything's happily in place, rotated like it's supposed to be, and the mercury is solved. So this is a great series. All of these puzzles are a ton of fun and I'm going to try my best to post the rest of them so you can follow along with those as well. Um, I hope this was helpful to somebody, and as always, happy solving!